And what are the weather conditions like still in Libya? Uh, yesterday, it was quite heavy rain. Is that still the case today? Uh, today, not. But yesterday, yes. And this, of course, uh, takes us back to the... Um, to the uh, state of the uh, displaced people uh, is still in Darna. So we're getting reports about uh, the people who are crammed to one side of the city, the side that, was, that wasn't that was hit uh, quite badly by the, the storm. So those people are displaced from the houses that were swept away uh, by the flood and survived. And those people are in need of immediate a relocation. We have reports and calls from inside Libya to evacuate everybody that is that has survived this disaster in Darna into nearby areas so that they can uh, spare their lives uh, and, you know, amid the threats of contaminated water, uh, decomposed bodies that are everywhere still on the people are still on the lookout for bodies, not only survivors, recovered bodies. The shore. Uh, the sea is still washing up bodies uh, as of today. The bodies are being washed up in the sea as of today still. Is there anything more uh, that the international community, nations such as Australia, can do to ha assist? Well, of course, uh, people in Libya appreciate all the help that they could get, uh, especially uh, exper experienced help in... in uh, in search and rescue, uh, of course. Now, now phase two, phase two of the whole disaster is just to try and accelerate the the, the revival of the city, rebuilding the city. Uh, first, you know, taking away all these shocking, uh, shocking uh, scenes of the demolished uh, neighborhoods in Darna, and helping the city. Uh, rebuild itself again so that the remaining, the surviving people can actually go back and live in it. Abulkader Assad, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. No problem.